So we've, we've mentioned it uh, a, little, a little bit up until this point, but the rumor going around is that this could possibly be the debut of Daniel Bryan. Were you, um, you know, was it interesting to you that they like made no attempt to, to, to push those illusions? No, I'm not, I'm not surprised they didn't um, kind of give that hint, but it's, it's one that, um, I mean, you could certainly make the argument that getting that hint out might, you know, lead to late buys. But I think as well, if if he's coming out, that they maybe feel that we've got this audience and this is going to be a legit surprise moment, even though I think people, the expectation is out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to that same argument of like, you know, how much, like how little they, they mentioned the, like concretely that CM Punk would be appearing. Um, but you know, yeah, I, it, it's out there and, um, you know, at this point, um, I don't think the audience will be disappointed no matter what, even if like Brian doesn't appear. Cause I mean, they, there's enough on this show for them to like, they bought tickets to this show probably without like they bought tickets to this show, even without punk actually being announced. Not, not, not even with the, the rumor. I suppose maybe the rumor was already there. But as as long as I get a CM Punk Darby Allen match, I think they'll be satisfied, and everything else I think has been built up pretty decently too. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Like if you were to really dangle it out there, like you do run the risk of, like granted, I think that this is an audience that I don't know how big of an issue it is, but you don't necessarily want to have undercard just be drowned out with like yes chance, and it's like mm-hmm. that's the that's the focus is when are we getting Danielson? Like I think it's enough that it's out in left field that people are thinking about it, but it's not kind of dominating people's expectations for Sunday. There's enough out there that they're um, that they're there to watch the show for. Man, Chicago would is really getting spoiled here. You know, if I'm if I'm in Cincinnati, I'm like, hey man, what about me? You know. John Moxley, yeah, great. Well, if, you, on, if Danielson surprises. shows up on Sunday, then you're probably getting him in Cincinnati. That would be yeah, the assumption. Too. Right. So let's let's quickly just look at the card before we go to the feedback. Um, so CM Punk versus Darby Allen, Kenny Omega, Christian Cage for the AEW title, Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander for the women's title, Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers for the tag titles in a steel cage, Miro versus Eddie Kingston for the TNT title. Chris Jericho versus MJF in the final fight. Paul White versus QT Marshall. John Moxley versus Satoshi Kojima. The Casino Battle Royale, um, where they have announced all but two women. Uh, we have Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, The Bunny, Big Swole, Julia Hart, Ty Conti, Diamante, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Hikaru Shida, Emi Sakura, Jade Cargill, Kiera Hogan, Abaddon, Layla Hirsch, Kylan King, Rebel, Jamie Hayter, and Anna Jay. Uh, so we have 19 announced women. And then the 10-man tag on the buy-in with uh, Jurassic Express, Taylor, Yuta, and Cassidy against the HFO. Yeah, it's um, it's a good-looking card. You know, especially after having seen this episode of Dynamite. It looks better to me now than it maybe even did last week. And I think that's off the strength of some of these promos. Um you know, Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage, I, I mean, we didn't get as much focus on for this particular episode, but it was, uh, like, they've done a lot. They spent a lot of TV time on it prior to CM Punk arriving. I thought it was a good angle to end the show with. Like, I think you, like sure, that was the yeah. last endearing sure. image uh, at, at the end of it. If sure. you're if you're throwing up percentages of the match that goes on last, Punk and Darby Allen, what, what would you peg that at to go on last? 90. 90? Yeah. And the other 10 being Omega Christian? Yeah. I don't think Jericho MJF is... Oh, I don't think that one would be going on last. It would be interesting, because if they did say that last, that would really do a great deal of, like, getting people to suspend their disbelief that this would be, like, Jericho's last If there's a crazy uh, left field option to go on last, I think it would be the cage match. If only to really put over... Like, the Bucks losing should be a massive deal when they lose those tag titles. And if you were to put that, I, I'm not expecting it, but I'm saying that would be the left field choice to go on last. If you were doing the title change and Phoenix and Penta feel like main event guys coming out of this show. But I think Punk and Darby is the match that should close the show. And your only argument is if Omega is retaining and being confronted by Danielson to go off the air. Yeah. There yeah, is that, so. that scenario that would make sense. 
There are a lot of really interesting factors at play here. I mean, man, Danielson just really kind of adds to it. But, you know, thinking back a few weeks to maybe some of the disappointment to hearing about Hangman Page not being a part of this show, I don't think anybody's complaining now. You know, like you have a whole, like, who would have thought at that point you'd get CM Punk and possibly Daniel Bryan on the same show? Um, Chris Jericho possible retirement, I guess. And I think what what promises to, to be a really hot Bucks versus Lucha Brothers match for sure. What um, when it comes to uh, pay per view buys, um, I believe their highest. If we're going by like Russell Nomics. I think it's like one thirty five. Like th- these are like estimates. What what do you think is the ceiling for this event? Oh man, uh, well I think it breaks that. I um, do too. Uh, what is the ceiling, man? That's so hard because it's like the big element is CM Punk. You know, he 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 could po- he po- he definitely will bring a lot of new fans. How many new fans? You know, is there like a ratio that you can derive from his t- the TV rating? Um, to to guess, it's uh, it's one of those where it's like if they're gonna break the ceiling of what they've done, like sometimes when you break through that, it's like who knows how high it can go at that point. Like it could mm-hmm. just be a flood. Of new people. And again, 24 hours out, if there's all this buzz about, man, this pay-per-view could have Danielson on it too. You're yeah. getting Punk's first match back. It's going to be a kick-ass show. There's a lot of factors working for this show that I I don't know if 200 is too ambitious, but like I feel this one could be... I, I fully expect this to be the biggest one. It's only a question of how much they break through on, on pay-per-view. Well, I have no way to like gauge like pay per view buy rates anymore because like I don't have a WWE comparison to go by. It's it's really just AEW and like what else is sort of in in their league, you know? At that level, yeah. I mean, like UFC, it's it's still pay per view, um, but, but it's streaming. not even. It, yeah, it's like it's almost a, it's a different sport, and it's also just I I don't know if I'd be able to get a UFC like AEW number off of a UFC. But do you take a guess, John? Put yourself out there. Put a number on the board. I'm going to go and say, I'm going to say they're going to do 190, okay? Oh, just that's shy a, of 200, okay. Yeah, let's say. That's a, right. That would be like a solid, like, that's adding like 65,000 buys, 55,000. I'm, I'm going to go 189.899. Uh, okay, I don't think we're going to get that exact, but the range. <laughs> If they do 190 to 200, I think that that's a really healthy number that they're, oh, yeah. and that's going to set the bar very high. I mean, that would coming out of this weekend, it would be a very high bar that they've set for Rampage and for their pay per views that are going to be hard to match those those marks set by book. But, but explain, explain, explain to me, does that number include like online purchases? Yes. This fight. Yes. Okay. And and we get those numbers. Wow. Or at least like some people get those numbers. I mean, it's not it. It would be very interesting if AEW, I think, honestly, for their own, like, I think they should take the tack that, like, Showtime does. When they have a big pay-per-view, they put out a press release and announce it. Like, for AEW, why why hide a success? Well, the the problem is when you don't have a success, when you don't announce it. Then people but they know. do that when they're like Tony Khan only tweets when there's a big television number. He doesn't tweet every week. He says, thank you. We were number one on cable this week. For sure. You, you like, might that's promotion. Right. It's yeah. that's a great number. It's a big statement that, hey, we are we are the, the, the lone wrestling company that's doing well on pay-per-view. It's PR. You're right. That's yeah. success. Yeah. If, if this one happens to break records and we sold X amount of ice cream bars. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, for sure. And the ice cream bars are going to be sold uh, all three nights at mm-hmm. the Now Arena. Man, if you bought one of those wrappers uh, for like forty bucks, I don't know what to say to you. Okay, the market's going to be flooded with them. 